We're in Ireland right now. Yes. Not uh, right now, but right now. In the world. In the world. So we were pre-we pre-recorded a couple of videos to, to go out while we're there. While this video is airing, we are probably in a car driving down to Waterford. Somewhere doing something. Yeah. But we thought, let's do a video on Irish whiskey <laughs> in honor of the Irish Adventure. And uh, we asked the Whiskey Tribe, Tribe of Magnificent Bastards and Whiskey Lovers across the world, what is your favorite Irish whiskey? And these are the top 10 yes. results. Irish whiskey, when was it that basically the entire industry collapsed into? Milk? By the mid 1970s, the entire, all the whiskey production in Ireland had collapsed into one distillery, Middleton. Yep. And then they moved from the old Middleton distillery to the new Middleton distillery and started there, right? Okay. Now since then, other people are doing things like Walsh Whiskey, which is our number 10 whiskey on the list, Writer's Tears. For this, and the reason why I'm excited that we're in Ireland right now is because it's actually going through a bit of a whiskey renaissance. Yes. If you like Irish whiskey, you've never lived at a better time than right now. The yeah. world's changing right before your eyes. Mm -hmm. Now this is Walsh Distillery. They're not making, they do have a distillery now. Right. But they, this bottle is from the times when they weren't making, they had contracts sourced. Yeah. There are different discussions about where this whiskey's coming from. Some say Bushmills, some say Cooley. Okay. But what it is, is a mix of pot still and single malt Irish whiskey. Man, we're gonna get so much shortbread cookie on these whiskeys. Yeah, but this one's That's a little more lemon note. A little bit, but that was a buttery, rounded, sweet, almost a cinnamon, but definitely that shortbread cookie, bready type of vibe. It's beautiful. Now in Writer's Tears, this always struck me as a little bit, a little bit glassy, a little bit shiny. It is, it's a little, I was gonna say a little metallic. Yeah. Right, so there is this, all the sweetness in here, tastes of like a metallic sweetness. Now we're gonna be popping through these uh, whiskeys one by one. We'll give quick first impressions. If you want a more in-depth review, two videos. Well, we've tasted all of these. More in-depth reviews on our other channel, The Whiskey Vault, it's gonna be a whiskey review channel. And by more nice. in-depth reviews, we mean relatively speaking. Every <laughs> once in a while, we remember that there's a whiskey yeah. <laughs> somewhere that we should be referencing. Listener Berg, nine. So Yellow Spot is part of the line from Mitchell and Sons, which dates back to the 18, uh, late 1800s, 1880s, I think. They were wine merchants who got into whiskey who started purchasing barrels. This is kind of like- This is also Middleton, but they were sourcing barrels of whiskey and then each one of their ranges ranged from seven, green, yellow, red, and yeah. so on. This is gonna be a little bit more, a little bit more fruit. Yellow Spot is their 12 year old pot still, single pot still Irish whiskey. Yeah. So it's all that uh, unmalted barley mixed with malted barley. This is all three kinds of casks, American bourbon, Spanish sherry, and Spanish Malaga. It's, it's it's a little more musty, rich, musty, and barely musty. Uh, it's a bit more of a not a sugary sweet fruit, mm -hmm. but more of like a, a heftier fruit. Now in Irish whiskey, you've got a traditional pot still Irish whiskey, which is pot stilled Irish whiskey, but using a mash of a hundred percent barley, okay. where a percentage of it is unmalted barley. Okay. That's traditional pot still Irish whiskey. Okay. Second style, Irish single malt. Mm -hmm. A single malt is done exactly like you would find it in Scotland or England. It's 100% malted barley pot still. Sure. And then you have grain whiskey, Irish grain whiskey, and that's usually corn or wheat and column still production. Mm -hmm. And then most whiskeys that you drink at a bar that say Ireland on them are a mix of those three styles or two of those styles together. The yellow spot more so than most other Irish whiskeys, I get less of that shortbread cookie and more of a dark fruit. I agree. Next we're moving to number seven on the list, Redbreast Lestow. I had no idea Redbreast would make an appearance on this list. Who knew? It's very popular in the community. Uh, Redbreast Pot Still Lestow. This is a partnership with Bodegas Lestow in Huera, and uh, Juarez, Spain. Middleton makes this and the yellow spot, green spot, all this. Redbreast is nine to 12 years old, Lestow, nine yeah. to 12 years old. Yeah. And then finished for a period of time specifically in Lestow sherry barrels. Mm -hmm. There's that multi element in there. Mm. It's a nice rounded. Yeah, but there's some rich. There's some dark dessert fruits in here this time. Yeah. No, I was getting a little bit of dark fruit on the other one too, but this is more rich, mm -hmm. more desserty with those dark Oh, fruits. taste it, you taste sherry. The aftertaste and the uh, the ra the thing surrounding the whiskey is sherry. It's like a it's like an Irish whiskey with the a sherry, sherry wrapper. A sherry wrapper. Yeah. All the way around it and the finish. It it actually the sherry finish 
That actually pairs brilliantly. It really does. With the Irish um, richness. I always wondered if sometimes too much sherry could overwhelm an Irish whiskey, but if this no, is how they, it goes, it's they, proof. They struck it's a very nice well balanced. balanced. They struck a nice balance there. We're gonna move on to another red breast, mm -hmm. but this time it's just straight red breast 15. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> We're so saucy. Okay. So this is just the classic pot still Irish whiskey, 15 years old. Now the thing that's actually coming out from the 15, more so than the Listau Sherry Cask Finished version, is that butteriness from the shortbread Way cookie. Way more. The wrapper with those dark fruits and the Listau Sherry Finish, it kind of tamed those, it tamped those down a bit, but they're bursting. Bursting out of the glass. This is way more of the vanillas in yeah. the butter biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of having strawberry shortcake without the strawberries. Mm. You know what I mean? You got like a creme brulee vibe like, on these. Yeah, like the bread and the and the cream for strawberry shortcake, yeah. but no strawberries. Irish it's a little bitey at the end, a little woody. Uh, well, at 15 years though. Yeah, and what's the proof? 46%. This one's got a little bit of a bitter finish, mm. and that's nice. We're moving to Sexton, which surprised me. This one surprised me. No, this is. I did not expect to see this, this on a favorites rel list. Relatively new on the market is the Sexton here. I have a feeling that this is proof that marketing works. Well, <laughs> and this has been always a weird one for me because we've reviewed this, we've compared it to other whiskeys a few different times. Every time I come back to this, it's it's very much a hit or miss. Sometimes yeah. it's right there, exactly what I want. This is beautiful, this is lovely, this is light, this is sweet. Irish whiskey goodness, and other times it's like thin and you know, there's yeah. no depth, it's too simple. In theory, this is 100% malted barley and it's triple distilled. Oh. And they say that it's made the maltiness in comes. County Antrim, which is where Bushmills is. Almost so, a, there's a very real chance that this is Bushmills. Almost a raisiny maltiness. No age statement on that nose. This actually has more of a the dark fruity character than I remember. See, I'm getting more of a dark wood. I could say like a wet earth, like a like a ripe green apple maybe. I'm also getting yeah, I get green apple too. I get that. Well, more so than any, most Irish whiskeys I can remember, there is an earthiness to this. More than what we've tasted so far, definitely. Oh, it yeah. just vanishes. You you wish it was at least 46 or maybe a little more oily. This is Jameson Black Barrel. Well, this is when Jameson uh, recharred some of the barrels. Now this is a select reserve version, but there's a couple of black barrels. And this some vanilla honey on top of the buttery biscuit. That's nice on the nose, man. Oh, it's just kind of uh, pretty. Oh, we're in Irish whiskey though. Come on. So it's got grain whiskey mixed into the pot still whiskey with this one. Yeah. And you can taste the grain whiskey, it's a little thinner. Well, but the finish for this mm -hmm. is actually more satisfying than the Sexton. I totally agree. Yeah. It's got more depth and presence. Yeah, yeah. But it starts with the grain spirit shininess. And it is a little bitter. It's more bitter than any... Bitter? You're getting bitter? I'm getting wood tannin. Relatively talking speaking. The meat and the potatoes and the yeah. body of this thing is going to be that really sweet caramel vanilla shortbread cookie. The next one, I'm excited about this one, but there's almost nothing left in our glass. It's the Teeling Single Malt. They are starting to make things, oh, but wow. they had a contract for a long time uh, when they sold the Cooley Distillery to be able to keep using Cooley whiskey. Now this one, we don't know who it is, and they don't say it could be Bushmills. Okay. Again. Now we're getting to very much a different character with Dude, the, there's molasses in this. With the Irish, I'm saying. They're getting, they're turning into a different animal here. Now this it's is a, 100%. A different, a different breed. This is 100% malted barley. Like a, like a sour apple and a fresh hay. Five different casks, according to what they originally said. You've got sherry cask, port cask, Madeira cask, white burgundy, and cabernet finishes. I would be very interested to see what our reviews for each of these look like compared to our notes right now because one of the things we've talked about many times on the context channel before, is everything. context is everything and what you get out of a whiskey is going to vary dramatically based on you know things as small as the time of day or as huge as what you recently hey. ate, what you recently drank. Okay. I like the nose on this a lot. It's very wine heavy though. It's 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 all the finishes are very dominant. Almost um, like a white wine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a white burgundy. Oh, okay. Finish in this. Because. Oh, this flavor is great. By at least half. This is at least fifty percent more uh, dramatic and rich and vibrant than, at least. than anything we've had on the list so far. At least. Yeah. Yeah, and that includes the red breast. Oh, Lestat. And the red breast is beautiful. Yeah. This though, the concentration 
I'm, you know, I'm going back to the dark fruits mixed with like some oh, yeah. white, white wine elements in there, a fresh hay. This is all wonderfully stewed fruit desserts. Yeah, and there's a ripe apple in there to lighten it up. The next one is my personal favorite. It's number three on everybody else's list. I know you so well. But it's green spot. <laughs> it's green spot. <coughs> now, oh, look at it, look. <laughs> like there's literally water. That is a reasonable amount of water left Sorry, in that glass. Sorry. Feels very refreshing. <laughs> it actually reminds me of my memory of Green Spot. <laughs> what? Getting, well, so here's what happened. Getting coughed on by a handsome yeah. man. When, get it? Yeah, handsome <laughs> man. No, my memory of Green Spot is it's the first whiskey ever that includes Scotch, oh. bourbon, anything, where okay. I had this right brain experience. Are you ready? Go. It was where I thought I knew what I was drinking. Right. But I was talking to somebody and hanging out, not paying attention. Right. And I took a smell, and all of a sudden, my brain right. placed me into a memory without me expecting it. Okay, you've been saying this note. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the memory attached to the note, but you've been saying this note about Green Spot that yeah. I'm like always vaguely, maybe kind of right now, I absolutely am getting yeah. a coconut. Yes! Okay. So my memory was standing on South Padre Island in the Gulf of Mexico yeah. with coconut sunscreen, that banana boat coconut yeah, sunscreen, yeah. salt water, yeah. and Interestingly enough, the the smell of the rubber uh, canvas, okay. the canvas raft, like hot canvas, yeah, and then the smell of green and the green apple. That is this, that is a uh, coastal smell with coastal beach, not not Scottish coast with like the no. brine and the seaside. No, and then, dirty redneck Riviera. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So and it's not salt water that I'm smelling. What it's actually the smell of is dried salt water on skin, mm. so, on hot skin. Along with those things, I'm also getting a really nice dose of hair. Absolutely. Yeah. This is so good. I'm so glad it made the list. I'm so glad it made the top three, because I totally agree. Oh, it's balanced. It's not the most intense or rich no, whiskey we've had. Beautiful. The healing single malt is going to be more rich and vibrant, yes. but, but this is nice and delicate and but balanced you see while why still being full body bodied enough to be very very interesting. You see why I like the, this better than the yellow spot? Yeah, absolutely. It's unique. Yeah. It's a unique Irish whiskey, for, to be sure, and it's lovely. Whoever blends it does an amazing job, because yeah. I've never found a bottle of green spot that wasn't amazing. Number two was Jameson Stout Cask. That really surprised this me. This surprised you in our community? Well, because In it's, our community. It's not that expensive. That's what I'm saying. It's not fancy. That's what I'm saying. You gotta keep in mind the availability of these brands. That's gonna play a huge part. Yeah, you can part. get this everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I love the notes that the stout barrels added to Jameson. Because we like this so much, one of the first things we did at Crowded Barrel Let's get a stout barrel. Let's see if we can put bourbon in a stout barrel. See what happens. And it worked! It's amazing! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They originally worked with stout brewers at Franciscan. Yeah. Now, if you go to their website, they don't say who, which beer they're using. Okay. And I'm guessing that's because we've had this problem with like the meat cask. They scaled up, and so now they're just trying to get stout casks from as many places as they can. Right. I'm totally guessing. I don't actually know about that. There's this rounded off creaminess to Chocolate cream. Yes. It reminds me yeah. of a Cadbury egg. Have you ever had the Cadbury's eggs? They mm -hmm. come out a mm -hmm. certain time of the year. That cream egg. It's just a hug, man. It's a good friend. Oh, it's yeah. almost too friendly. It's this friend that's almost too nice, like almost annoyingly nice. It's like, man, give me a little spice, give me a little flavor, a little, little ball busting in there. It's just gentle and effortless. All the notes that are there, they're not, you know, weird outlier notes. They're squarely in Irish territory, but they're just complimentary and nice and lovely. It's buttery, definitely one note though. Buttery, shortbread. One note, I'm gonna say two and a half. Vanilla shortbread cookie, and then this creamy wrapper that the stout cast brings to the table. Now we're finishing with, and here's the thing, I think this was biased. I think that the mooch influenced the tribe too much. No, I, look, and I they all chose Rex's favorite <laughs> Irish whiskey. Dude, I, so hold on. Hold on! The number of people who have told me, Rex, not only are you handsome, brilliant and wise, insightful, y'all those things, delicate, you your, your recommendation of the red breast cast drink has changed my life. And I have set up a shrine to I'm you. I'm a better mother, better father. A shrine to you in not the closet, the living room. Yeah. Because of this whiskey. Right next to the TV. Yeah. 
This is everything you love about red breast, but turned up 50%. I just want to go with it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of the seals. <laughs> For me, the red breast cask strength is no holds barred, voluptuous and beautiful, yes. iconic Irish yes. whiskey. I totally agree. Uh, and the best of that classic because the cask strength gives you all this drama and a roller coaster of flavors that just sort of journey through, start with an explosion, get subtle, brighten a little bit, and then finish with this sweetness. It's like they duct tape it onto a two by four. And <laughs> just beat just you with wood. it. And then ah. it takes you with this delicious glory and then smashes you over the head. And you say, thank you, sir, you might have another. The wood element coming out of this, it has all of these big, rich, sweet, desserty flavors right up against it, and this is beautiful dance of those two very different notes, but they complement each other so well. I think that's a pretty damn good list for the top I agree. 10 Irish now, whiskeys according to whiskey lovers in the world. Here's whiskey. the real question. Yeah. What does the blend taste like? Wow. Are you ready? Yeah. Smells like green apple. It smells does like, like green apple and, yeah. I, and Irish whiskey, ironically. You know what? This is more simple. Yeah, it's a little flat. This is more simple than I think anything. Yeah, the deck of cards just collapsed. Yeah, and it falls flat. House of cards falls flat. This is just nice, sweet, simple. Yeah. A little green apple on the nose. We'll do a quick check-in from Ireland. Here we go. Ireland. Yeah. Oh, we 